Okay, Sam. Here you are, Marine Tech again. Yeah, how, how do I explain this? Yeah. Um, the mania runs deep. <laughs> gardener number two. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm a uh, buy gardener owner now, so uh, addict, I should say. I definitely think there's some some addiction. So why the you have the six that everybody's seen run? Why the three? Well, uh, I have a shop that probably can't accommodate a boat big enough for the six and since i'm thinking about this will be my last boat i have to build it without going out and renting a new shop that makes no sense to me and uh, so i start shopping for a three cylinder and this is just half of our other engine yeah and i can i can cram this into almost anything okay so you're going to design something around this engine now. correct so we saw this on the internet, Joe McCool. I'm 99% certain that this thing was over in Ireland running about four years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, we spent some time here at Marine Tech just playing with our coffee and stuff. And I got the fuel rack freed up. It was all super seized. And uh, the governor seems to work. We got fuel to everything. I don't know. We don't have a keel cooler, so we just bypassed that. We got coolant in it. We did put another one of these pre-lube pumps on it, so we're gonna try and squirt a little fresh oil into it. And then, um, I think we're just gonna see how she runs. Let's do it. All right. The lift pump is probably fine, but since we have the fuel system apart, when you build your boat, we'll put this ahead of the ray core, and that way you can easily change your filters. And yeah. All right, you're gonna be on throttle here. You should okay. be able to idle it. You're gonna watch for oil pressure. Off is forward on this governor lever here. So off. That's okay. off. That's, that's off. run. That's okay. I don't know. Let's do it. You should shut the camera off. We'd have better. Maybe it'd start. Um, oh, I guess we got to put the ground wire on. We had that off for safety. All right. Now let's see what happens here. That's a good sign. Yes, give it a try. Yeah, give her a little more juice. to secure our batteries and uh, now that she circulated we use a little bit of nice expansion tank huh might have to dig around you know Old school well some of these gardeners have that expansion tank you know in the marine on the front that I've seen I don't know that I've ever seen one I'll send you a picture yeah. I don't know if any are available but we'll have to figure out something to build an expansion tank for okay. Got oil. Okay, Gardner, start number two. Get her fired up again. We also tied down the batteries so they don't fall off the back side. So we clear up here? All clear. Here we go.
10. I would expect to be higher than that. You know, good too. Oh, this dinosaur. Okay, Professor Matt. Sam and I started this earlier. We know it runs. Uh, we just ran it for a little. The problem was we got it running. We had low oil pressure, but it was. And we have oil coming out of the rockers here, and everything seems to be working fine. I just want to get some B-roll of the oil pressure and the actual oil coming out. And of course, we wanted all the Marine Tech students, since we started at lunchtime, to hear the old girl run. Um, we haven't sorted out, you know, we have the fuel issues as to why it has low oil pressure. Yeah, Maybe it'll come up. Was, you said it was about 10 PSI. 10. So I can see oil. A lot more, especially with cold oil. Yeah. And so not enough. We can see it coming through at a low speed. I'm not, you know, we're just going to do that and then get to some gardener experts. Hopefully, Joe McCool can ping in and uh, help us out a little bit and find out if. If something is stuck or whatever. Hoping it may be an issue with the oil pressure regulating valve here. It could be maybe a frozen uh, seat on the spring or something like that something. where it's dumping, dumping oil. I mean, off. everything else on this was kind of half seized up or more. So, <laughs> you know, it's a thing. But uh, it's going to jump around. We don't need the electric pump. The lift works just fine. This thing's going to be shaky. I know that from earlier. I should have tightened that up. But whatever. Let me get my B-roll running here. Okay. Any questions out there from our captive audience? Fire it all. All right, here we go. Well, we gotta leave. We gotta leave. We gotta leave. Okay, that was totally our fault. We had moved the gardener back inside and then said, no, we can't stand not knowing about the oil pressure. So we pulled the cover off the oil filter housing just to take a look at it and everything looked fine. We forklifted the motor back out and uh, Matt and I to start it for the class. And, and as we said, we wanted to get some footage of this thing pumping oil. Well, when we put the lid back on, we didn't get the O-ring, the big square ring seated right and holy crow it may not have oil pressure at this point but in that short run time it had to have pumped out uh half three quarters of a quart at least of oil it was going everywhere so we uh scrambled around got some oil absorbs got that mess cleaned up got it wiped off got the um lid the gasket seated properly tightened down and uh then yeah now we'll start it again and see what's going on with this old 3LW. So we don't know because everything else was froze up, stuck and whatever. Maybe the pressure relief. Should start. Ready? Fingers crossed. <laughs> Once again, big shout out to Joe McCool, uh, Tangent Engineering. This video that he had uploaded over three years ago, we are 99% certain that this is the engine that Sam bought. Um, this engine, if you look, go back to Joe's channel. Actually, we buy all our gardener parts, everything we can uh, from Joe and support his business. Um, we love these old, the, we love the mechanics that are keeping these old engines going. And so if you, when we looked at the two videos of ours and you, you'll see like we have two stainless steel lines, one on the fuel system and one for the uh, oil pressure that goes up to the overhead there that are not the factory copper lines. The, those gardener covers um, on the back side of the engine, like the orientation of nuts, all the color schemes, the gearbox. Anyways, we're certain that this is the engine um, who, the person, there was somebody in between that owned it um, on the East Coast that purchased it, never put it in a boat. Sam bought it, had it shipped here to Anacortes. And so this, we're using this for reference, of course. That engine was running, had great oil pressure. There's a very low chance that it would lose oil pressure just in transport. It had not been installed, it hadn't been running. 
And so it's quite a mystery to us, but we're going to sort it out. So thanks again, Joe. Go to his channel, check out all of his Gardner engines. We only have two here at school and two videos, but you can binge watch all of his stuff. It's a lot of fun. We love these old engines. So Mike, let's do fire in the hole here. I'm going to get my... Hold on before you stop. Let me make sure I got... I got some beef so I can get oil. Go for it. Oh, we want to see what happened with the transmission. Fire in the hole. Oh, God. Here we go. Here we go. Hold, hold on a second. Let me make sure this is still recording. Oh, yeah. Ready? Okay. Yeah, transmission test. Transmission Here test. Here we go. Come on, bro. I'm going to try and get a serial number and run it. After five starts running this engine, thinking about it, thinking about it, driving us crazy, the very first thing, this should be a tech tip you always do, we teach our technicians, is verify the problem. We were curious, does the engine actually have 8 PSI? We don't know. That was a brand new gauge that was in the package when um, Sam bought this engine. So it came as a unit and of course just plumbed it all up and fired up the motor and saw that low oil pressure. And here I am, I just put a quick coupler on it, hooked it up to our air system, which has got a shutoff valve and a gauge, a known good gauge, which is what you do to verify a problem. And look at these results. This is crazy. You can see me there checking like, uh, What's going on? Do I not have something hooked up right? No, it was hooked up right. I don't know if you can see this. You gotta be kidding me. We're all worried about low oil pressure on the Gardner. Brand new gauge, bupkis. Guess that solves that. So, try this again. To get, ten, get our eight, 10 PSI on here. We can go 30 on this gauge and still not even touch on this one. So, and this is PSI to PSI. We didn't mess up anything there, but it does look like eight 
or so, 8 to 10 on here, is up close to 50, which is exactly what Joe McCool had. That is a huge relief for us. So, huh. we love it when it's the simple things. Now we can keep working on that engine, do a few more projects. We'll do a full video on uh, all the work we've done to it up till now and how we're, I think we're gonna have to fabricate a front motor mount and some things like that. So, interesting though, for sure. Never had a brand new gauge that was bad, but I guess it happens. Thanks for watching. Thank you.